Hello everyone, I have now started up my own events company where I'll be bringing guests from all over the world for a live interview, meet and greet and questions from the audience. My first guest will be undefeated boxer Joe Kozagi. Tickets are on sale now for the event in Glasgow on the 29th of January 2022. You can click the link in the description or go on to Eventbrite Type in Jokel's Aggie Glasgow and purchase your tickets there. I will hopefully see you all soon for what's going to be an amazing night. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. So it started off with a little patch here. But then a week later, I literally had limbs swelling up everywhere in my neck, armpit, groin. And then when I say it started falling, it fell. Like, it was like I couldn't touch it without handfuls coming out. You know, I was like horrifically depressed um, when it started happening. When You know, it was a week before I went for the shave and I had like a handful of hair and, and I was just like, oh God, how am I going to get through this? This was before I even knew how a wig worked and before I, you know, knew what was going to happen and I couldn't get any answers, still don't have any answers. You know, it's just a lot to kind of get your head round. Um, but then after the hair fell, I, I managed to digest that, but then the body hair went with it. And yeah, losing my eyelashes and my eyebrows was fucking shit. Especially now, a year down the line, your partner will get used to it quicker than you. I still look in the mirror and I'm still like adapting, even every day, every night. I'm still, you know, sat in the, in the night with my little beanie hat on and no makeup on. And I'm thinking, you know, does he think I'm ugly? Does he think I'm attractive? Does he want to have sex with me tonight? And everything does change. I remember my, my dad, he passed away with leukemia. And oh, I remember when he was. Um, getting chemo when we had to shave his hair like, it's fucking oh, heartbreaking that it shit is. Like, it I is. remember my mum she went up the stairs and broke her heart like, mm. it's really like it's something it's like that's the, the acceptance that something's not right and it's important for me that everyone sees how real shit is you know how life isn't perfect and you've got to keep on fighting it and you've got to get through it so for me sharing that was really important and being so open about it when I was hurting the most was really important um, but yeah, I remember leaving the salon and sitting in my car for half an hour, just bawling my eyes out. Like, literally, I was devastated. Boom, we're on. In but, action. Yes. <laughs> and today's guest, we've got Zara Jackson. How are you, babe? I'm all right, yeah. A bit rough on the weekend, but I'm getting there. Yeah, feeling tender. <laughs> A little bit, yeah, a bit fragile. Mm -hmm. Down in Preston here. Yeah, welcome to my home. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> inviting me. So, model, been on X in the Beach and stuff. Yeah. But last year you went through a bit of trauma, you lost, started losing your hair. Mm -hmm. You were diagnosed with alopecia? Yeah, alopecia universalis, which is like the worst case of alopecia you can get. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely no history of it at all, no family history, just literally never had hair loss, just age of 28 it just all just went in all six us, weeks all of a sudden that's nearly a year yeah it's a year, year ago now. now and that's wigs you're wearing now yeah, yeah so yeah this is obviously a wig um i have no eyebrows or eyelashes or body hair so these are obviously eyebrow transfers from my range um and i just wear eyelashes now because i think losing my eyelashes was the hardest part you wouldn't even notice though to, to yeah i could have definitely got away with hiding it couldn't i yeah <laughs> um <laughs> but no it's, it's it was nice that i could share my journey and be open about everything as I was going through it, just mm -hmm. just being open with it really. Um, and it's helped so many other people as well, raising the awareness around what alopecia is. Cause I mean, when it happened to me, I didn't even know what it was. I was like, what on earth is going on? I literally thought, I thought that there was gonna be something really wrong with me. Um, alopecia isn't actually classed as an illness. Um, it's not, it's, it's more cosmetic rather than health which is crazy because it's your immune system attacking itself. Um, but yeah, there's... Um, That's that, here we are. Here we are. I always go back to the start of my guests. Yep. Where you grew up and how it all began. 
Okay, so it should be what, before my hair loss? Yeah, just right when you were born, where you were born, how yeah, you were raised. Yeah, so I've, I was born in Longton, which is just around the corner. Um, I've always stayed in Penn with him. My family all live abroad now, though, so um, I don't really have many of them. They're visiting at the minute, actually, they're upset. <laughs> but I don't normally have them around. Um, so that was quite difficult when I obviously went through the hair loss. It was quite hard not having them there. Mm. Um, but, you know, you get through things, you, you get challenged and you just deal with it. But yeah, so I've obviously, I used to be a dressmaker. So I used to, I just self-taught myself one day. I, I can't do a nine to five job, it kills me. So, and I can't work for other people because I don't like being told what to do. So I was like, right, okay, I need to do something that's gonna make me money. Um, so I went into dressmaking after doing nails for a few years. And yeah, then since then I went on X on the beach. That was quite interesting. Wasn't for me at all, because I'm not a slag. <laughs> but it was fun and it was something to do. Um, it was very eye-opening, you know, it was nice to experience the media world and what's real and what's not about it. Um, but yeah, and then obviously following that, I then we all went into lockdown with COVID. I lost all my hair. Um, and since then, I've, I've obviously done my, my cosmetics range, hopefully to help other people, like whether they're going through cancer or just hair loss. It's just there to help them, really. Uh, what about skilling? How was school for you? School was horrific. Why? Yeah, school was really bad. Um, I but, was really badly bullied. I was always either beat up or uh, there was two occasions where I was black and blue. It, you know, I was a wealthy child in a public school. And I, even though I'm never, I'm, I'm not materialistic at all. I'm never the girl who's, you know, I'm, I'm not bothered. I would never go to someone's house and go, oh, like, I'm not that person at all. I'm not bothered at all who someone is. I take them for face value, not for what they've got. Um, but unfortunately, when it's the other way around, that's not always the case. So yeah, it was really difficult. Um, until I was, I'd say until I was about 15, 16. And then I started having pool parties and then I was popular. <laughs> Everyone loved me then. Um, but yeah, school was really hard for me. Um, I'm just grateful that I didn't go through this then because I wouldn't have been able to handle it then. What kind of, was this primary school or high school? Um, primary school was a bit shit, but high school was the real challenge for me why did you not go to pri private school um i got the op i got the offer i did get told i can do both i mean if i'm being honest i'm thick as picture so i couldn't get into private school anyway i did try in year i think it was year 10 i did try and i just couldn't pass the test again in all honesty um I, w I was unfortunately because i hated school that much i didn't really want to be in lessons i didn't really want to go so obviously that affected me um Academically, I, I just lapsed really with it. I just didn't do as well as I could have done. How did your secondary school bullying affect you? Going through your teenage years? I'm actually grateful for it. Why? Because it makes you stronger, doesn't it? Shit happens and then you just mm -hmm. deal with it. Um, the so, the so, so, social skills of it have definitely helped me. Um, you know, it's, it's good to see the real world. It's good to see how everyone lives different lives and, and experience challenging situations because the ultimately make you as a person who you are don't they what did you do after school so after school I actually worked for my dad for a little bit doing waitressing in one of his restaurants at the time um I hated it I was good at it but I hated it I'm good at talking to people so it was all right you know it's, it's not exactly a hard job so I, you know it wasn't bad but then I did a nail course and started doing acrylic nails um I passed my driving test as soon as I turned 17 and my dad kicked me out because he wanted me to get my independence which is Great. It wasn't great at the time, but now I'm really grateful for it because it really evolved me as a person. Um, so yeah, and then I started doing nails and then I was either mobile or they come to me. And then, yeah, I just started my dressmaking following that because I was just sick of socialising with different people and asking how the holidays were. <laughs> Are you kind of a recluse as well? I did what, sorry? A recluse? Do you like keep yourself to yourself? Yeah, I'm quite... I'll, I'll be open about what I want people to say. I think there's some things that you should keep private and behind closed doors. Um, but yeah, I'm quite open with stuff, especially with my alopecia. I think it's really important to just throw it out there and just be honest. When did you go on to, uh, is it X on the Beach? Yeah, How did that, that was come 2017. About? So I, at the time, I just got out of a very long relationship. How long? Um... Well, I actually went back into the relationship after X on the beach. So it was like four and a half years at a time. Um, and I was just a typical 24 year old girl that was just like, right, I've got to 
do something. I want to just, I, to be honest with you, I kind of felt like I'd done everything. I was quite happy with everything. And I was just like, got asked on Facebook, do you want to go on a TV show? And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I mean, from a young age, I have always, how do I say it without it sounding cringe? I've, I've, I've always been interested in being known and being in the media, being exposed. I've, I've never really shied away from it. Um, so being on TV for me was almost seen as success. And, you know, when you, when you are the daughter of a man who's very successful, because my dad's amazing, you do feel that pressure to almost be something on your own and, and be known for something on your own and, and, you know, have your success out there. So at the time, that was success to me. It's different now, completely different. I've had so many different experiences and successes and I weigh it up, so like totally different now. But yeah, at the time I was I was dead proud of myself for doing it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've been on TV. But now now it's like I forget about it really. Yeah, it's crazy it's that been and gone. you do see people on TV magazines and you think, fuck oh me, they God. look as if they've got a great life. Yeah, but I'll never look at it the same anymore. Now that I've done it, and then I know you know a lot of people that are in reality and that have, have, whether they're doing it now or they've done it before, you just see things differently. You just don't see what you did see before as like a viewer watching it. It's really strange. Yeah, because you realise it's all bullshit. There's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. There's a lot of bullshit, yeah. Who was all on that show? My show, so it was Joshua Ritchie, uh, Nicole Sharbass, um, Ross Werswick. I don't know if you know any of these people. I think I know the boy Ross. Ross, yeah, Ross yeah. has got the brand Couture Club. He's done really well with that, actually. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, um, Zahida Allen. She went on Georgia Show for a short period. But it was intense. I mean, it was literally like back, being back in high school for me. You know, I'm quite... I won't do anything I don't want to do. So being in that villa was very much, you know, they want you to play up to the cameras. They want you to attention seek. Now, I'm the girl that's been brought up that's been told, don't attention seek. Stop looking for drama. Like, stop being soft. That's me. So I'm very much like straight to the point you know like in a truth or dare do you want to suck his toe do i fuck i'm not gonna <laughs> that's just me that that's who i am you know like do you want to go and sleep in bed with a guy and shag him when you've known him two days no are you do gonna they, do it do they want you to do that they don't say things direct but the way they're obviously set up and filmed you know what the motives are i'm not a stupid girl you know you you know how the, they want for entertainment and how they produce things um but I just yeah I left on my own accord I was just done you know it was it was very much being filmed you know I get a lot of people saying are you and Zahida friends and da 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 we was very much friends behind the camera so when we were on camera she'd play up to it and be horrible to me and she even held her hands up and was like you know I'm sorry they want me to do this they wanted me to do that and I was just like do you know what like stop just doing it for the camera it's just be yourself like it's just not normal but I mean we were both really young then you know I'm nearly 30 now and she's I don't know I think she's a bit younger than me but she's a bit older now as well I think it's different isn't it when you've had time and you look back and you're like oh wow that really happened yeah. how did that change your life coming out especially for the McGill being bullied at secondary school and then coming out of that because everybody in reality show gets slaughtered oh, on, on, online so how did you adapt to that if you gave me the option of being called a fun sponge and boring or a slag, I'd take the fun sponge and boring. Like I will take that, I'll wear that with pride. I'm, 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 I'm happy with how I came across. Like they obviously aired it like I was miserable and was never smiling, which is not me. I am a happy person. I am, you know, silver linings and all that lot. But on that show, it was very testing for me to be happy because I was constantly in situations where I was the center of the drama and I'm just, I just didn't handle it very well at all. Like it, it got to a point where it, it affected my mental health so much because I was like, I need to get out of this villa. Like I'm not sleeping. I am around people that are like, are just not my people. Like it just was not for me. Um, so coming out of it, I was really nervous because obviously they film it in November but then it only airs the following March. So you're there dormant waiting for this to go live. And you're like, oh my God, like, what's going to change? Are people going to like me? Am I going to get a following? Which at the time when I'm only, you know, 24 was a priority from it. That's why you do it. Um, but no, it was really good. The response was fantastic. What about the trolling after that online? I hadn't, I didn't, oh, actually, yeah. 
So yeah, obviously I've had a nose job. I've had a boob job. Um, you do get offered free surgery and everything. And the, I've always wanted that anyway, because I've always wanted to modify things and change things about myself, as most people do. Is that what you were bullied about when you were younger? I used to get called alien head, Pete Burns, because I've always had naturally big, these are, <laughs> these are my lips. These, these are Pete my lips, Burns. you heard it here first. Yeah. I've had everything. Um, but after the show, I got called... Um, and there's nothing wrong with transgender people. I've got two best friends that are transgender. They're amazing. Um, but obviously as a female, that's quite hurtful to be put in that kind of category. And, and it was said in a nasty way. It wasn't said in like, oh my God, you're beautiful. You look like this person. It was like, oh, she looks like a tranny. Da, da, da. You know, these people didn't have a nice outlook on what they were saying. So it was very hurtful for me to be compared to, I can't remember the person's name now, but I did actually have a look of him. <laughs> he, he, he identifies as a male, but obviously dresses as female. Um, but yeah, it, it's not nice to hear stuff like that. It's not nice to be put down and you do constantly look in the mirror and, and me watching myself on TV was the biggest troll because I was trolling myself, watching myself like, Ugh, look at my nose. Like I need to change, I need to do that. And then when you've been on TV, you do get approached from so many surgeons saying, do you want a free nose job? Do you want a free butt job? And, and you do get sucked in. I mean, I can afford the surgery regardless, but when it's free, it's like, hell yeah. Like, why wouldn't I? Would you have ever done the surgery if you never went on the show? Yeah. yeah, I would. Would you have still done it? Best thing I've ever done. Would you have still done it without the show though, if you never went on it? Yeah. And you weren't getting trolled and shit like that and people Oh yeah, I'd, 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 I'd have done it anyway. Would you have? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy with my surgery. I'm so, I, I know when to start up. Like I'm done now, I won't have any more. You know, I, I work hard in the gym. I'm, I'm really happy. If, it, if there's anything I need to change, I work on myself. But I'm just so happy with everything that I've, I don't regret anything yeah, at all. Never, never have regrets. I'm, I'm really day. happy with nope. it. Um, what was like, like, life like after? So obviously you get like, I mean, you realize that paps are all set up. That's all complete bullshit. You know, I used to think, oh, you go to an event and there's paps there waiting for people. And like, how do they get these shots? They must stalk them. It's all self, it's all bollocks. But um, yeah, all the events you get invited to. And it's definitely um, a crazy whirlwind because you've almost, one minute you're relevant. And then when that dies down and the next show comes on, you're irrelevant. And it's like, you, you're old news. And, you know, for me, it was never a challenge because I have my own background and I have my own success in, in, in my own things that I've been doing. So I've got that security. But for friends that I know, they, you know, they've gone from having these paid jobs, having this, you know, oh, we want you here, we want you there, to then not being the hot stuff and being like, how can I get a job anywhere? I've no degree, I've no, I can't do anything. You know, and that must be, you know, really challenging i can see why there are so many struggles after social media because it just eats you up and spits you back out yeah it's fucking tough though because we chase an illusion we're chasing something oh, yeah, that doesn't it's all really bullshit. exist because it's all temporary bullshit we want to feel accepted we want to feel liked we want yeah. to feel loved and that doesn't give you that that's fucking and fake unfortunately love. a lot of people are prepared to sell the soul to the devil to yeah. be more successful you know you hear you watch some things and you think oh my god the way that people are faking a persona to be something how fake is that like how like false sense of security out of life is that like that's just not me it's not who I am. So last year then, was it the biggest trauma in your life then when you started yeah. losing hair? So there was no signs before it, no patches anywhere, nothing. nothing. So it started off with a little patch here, but then a week later, I literally had limbs swelling up everywhere in my neck, armpit, groin. And then when I say it started falling, it fell. Like it was like I couldn't touch it without handfuls coming out. Um, and then I remember going to um, a clinic in Preston um, I got recommended to go to them on social media because I put it on social media you know can anyone help me with what's going on and obviously with it being COVID at the time I couldn't get a doctor's appointment no one would see me it was all like a whirlwind of panic um, so I got recommended to this clinic now you've got to bear in mind when I'm saying this I'm not a stupid girl when you're being told that someone can help you from losing your hair and you just give them two grand you think oh, yeah I'll just take it it's, you know they scam me they scammed me a two grand and they couldn't help me at all. They were giving a laser treatment that was absolute abysmal. It was like bollocks, just did not work. Um, and I only found this out when I actually started going to a dermatologist privately 
because he was like, you need to get your money back. These have scammed loads of people that we know. Um, the only time I actually got my money back was when I put it on social media because they refused to refund me. And I, that was, that added to so much stress because obviously when you're trying to find answers and then someone's robbing you of the money, it's like even more, you're, you're like, oh my God, don't know whether I'm coming or I'm going. So that was really, really difficult. Um, but then following that, obviously, it, it it did just keep, it just went. So before that, there was no telltale signs. Were you stressed? Were you under um, pressure? Were... I, I'm a highly strong individual. Like I am, I will hold my hands up and go, do you know what? Like I attract drama. I don't like drama. I don't like confrontation, but I can't keep my gob shut if someone gives me shit <laughs> or if I've got problems or if something's upset me, I have to go and I don't like that. I can't just sit there and go, don't let it consume you, you're fine, you know, which I'm working on now. Um, I was very stressed, you know, lockdown wasn't easy. Anyone that has a partner in lockdown knows that, <laughs> or kids or whatever the case may be. It wasn't easy for anyone though, but I wouldn't say that it was traumatic for me or enough to lose all my hair. Definitely Do you smoke? Not. No. No smoking? No. Nope. How was the alcohol beforehand? Um, weekend, go out, nothing heavy. Usual nothing, shit. nothing out of the usual, yeah. So what is alopecia then for people who don't know? Well, so alopecia is an immune disorder, basically. It's when your immune system attacks itself. So for me, obviously, I did have juvenile arthritis, which is an immune disorder. Um, and then I did have my implants done. So that was a year and a half before I lost my hair. So I am currently doing research to see if my implants are causing my body to attack itself. Because they can, if you've got immune issues they can make that worse and they can then cause your body to do crazy shit so that's what i'm currently debating but there's just no science behind it like all the doctors everything everyone that i've seen is like no it's not them and i'm like well do i undergo an operation remove my boobs lose, lose even more confidence you know because it does you know it, it is as a woman when your hair and your body it is your feminine side i know you're looking at me like that's really shallow but it is i know but sometimes you take risks man let's yeah it's fucking implants it, like, it is something i'm going to do i'm not ruling it off um i'm currently looking into stem cell treatment because yeah, stem cells is, is good treatment that's yeah, america, america so though is that in america russia, russia are you going so excited so i'm waiting to see their success rate first with alopecia cases because you know it's one of them it's a big risk it's not cheap and i, I want to make sure if i do it i'll be doing it for filming purposes i will be getting the whole thing filmed and making sure that i share it because if it can help me imagine how many people it'd help because hair loss is so common um but yeah i'm hoping that if i do that because i have always had underlying health issues with my immune system anyway imagine if i can fix it all like, you know, my joints are knackered from a juvenile arthritis. If I can repair and recover that in my body, it, it'd be amazing. Is there anybody else in your family that's got chronic stress or any chronic pain? No. no. How's your mum and dad? Are they stressed yeah, or worried? No, fine. I mean, my dad's a stress dad. He's, he's a businessman. He's always stressed. You yeah. know, work's stressful. But that's that's part and part. That's what happens, isn't it? When, you, when you're successful, you do get stressed. Of course, but, man, every time. You, but no, there's nothing that's that could have linked the two, really, for me to have my issues that I've had. So everything just started falling out, the hair, eyelashes, eyebrows, Fall, everything? literally. My head went first, so all my hair on my head just started going. And I actually started dealing with it. I was like, oh, it's quite a vibe, you know, I quite like it. And it is really weird, you know, it's it's like, I never thought, I used to joke, I used to go, thank I've got hair imagine me bald like I've got horns and I thought I had a weird shaped head thank god I don't but you do you start to think like you know it's not something that you'd ever think you'd have to go through as a woman for a man it's quite common for them to recede or go bald or whatever but for a woman you just never really think you'd be faced with that change and it's such a shallow thing to be that upset about you know I, I hit depression for a good three four weeks you know I was like horrifically depressed um, when it started happening, when, you know, it was a week before I went for the shave and I had like a handful of hair and, and I was just like, oh God, how am I going to get through this? This was before I even knew how a wig worked and before I, you know, knew what was going to happen and I couldn't get any answers, still don't have any answers. You know, it's just a lot to kind of get your head round. Um, but then after the hair fell, I, I managed to digest that, but then the body hair went with it and... Yeah, losing my eyelashes and my eyebrows was fucking shit. I'm not even going to paint it, like, paint a pretty picture. It was really hard. 
ever suicidal? Is what, sorry? Were you ever suicidal? Yeah. Um, when, I, when I did lose it, I was definitely... I, I went to the doctors and went on antidepressants for about a month. And then I was like, what am I doing? I remember, like, people that I've known in the past that have said they're on antidepressants, I see that as weakness. And I'm not knocking anyone, you know, that's not me giving them criticism that's just me saying your mind is yours to control a drug is not going to change that you need to change the way you are and change the situation but obviously for me I couldn't change the situation it was happening it was out of my control so for me I needed the help and at the time I thought it helped me but it didn't so I got I literally was like I'm not doing it and I'm not doing that anymore because you were in a relationship at the time how does that affect mm-hmm. in a relationship massively impacted it why well he didn't know what to say. He didn't know how to help me. It was like, you know, what do you... I, I didn't know what to say. So how can he know have known how to give me comfort, you know? I think when, especially now a year down the line, your partner will get used to it quicker than you. you I still look in the mirror and I'm still like, adapting even every day every night I'm still you know sat in the, in the night with my little beanie hat on and no makeup on and I'm thinking you know does he think I'm ugly does he think I'm attractive does he want to have sex with me tonight and everything does change because they in his mind he's probably thinking oh I'll be sensitive you know like she won't want to do it she, she might not feel comfortable and he's probably thinking about me rather than himself but obviously in my mind it was he doesn't want to go near me I feel like dog shit um, so yeah, it does. Sorry, you can hear my nephew crying. Um, it does definitely impact a relationship, hundred percent. Yeah. So relationship then that affects a relationship, affected your relationship. Yeah, I've often found myself in this process thinking, if he met me now, would he still want me? And you can't help that. That's natural for a woman to, you know, it is a drastic change. It is. It's life changing. It is. You know, it is just hair, but it is such a big deal to a woman and, and for a man as well, the way that guys are these days, it is such a shallow world. It is based on appearance and, you know, I do believe he loves me, but it doesn't stop you from questioning that. And I have many times thought, you know, would it be easier to meet someone, this is who I am, you either want it or you don't, you know, on a fresh kind of basis, it probably would because I know that the heart's in it for the right reasons, rather than they have to stick around, because, I mean, you, you have to be a big cunt to leave someone that's just lost a hair, wouldn't you, really? <laughs> but again, man... It's a bit of a prick move. I don't know, man. Like, it's fucking hair. Like, you look... For me, you're yeah. beautiful anyway. Like, oh, you look fucking you. great. So for Thanks. somebody to be a cunt yeah. towards it, yeah. shows you how much you're a cunt there. Do you know what I mean? There like, are a lot... Because I speak to a lot of girls that have hair loss. There are a lot of men that have left women for the, yeah. losing their hair. But a lot of people, everything's to do with looks now. Nobody's looking with fin, is that so? Awful. Honestly, it's awful. It's fucking shallow. It's so shallow. It shallow. I mean, but the way again, I it's see hard it, for anybody to say if they've not been in that yeah, position. Yeah, that position. Do you know what I mean? It it's, is difficult. It is a big change. But I mean, I can be a different girl every day. I've got about 50 wigs upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can be any hair colour I want. I can look any way I want. I, I love it. I think it's great. You know, if my hair does come back, I'll be keeping it shaved. If I could pay for one thing know, back, it'd be mad. Would you keep it shaved if it grew Promise back? I would. would you? 100%. What was it like it the first time you shaved it all off and you had to look yourself in the mirror? How was that? Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Um, I think it made it worse because I actually had an argument with um, my partner at the time on the day and he wasn't there with me. It was shit. Like shit. Because I had to travel to... Um, where was it? Harrogate. So I travelled to Harrogate because Emma at the time, bless her, she was so, she made me my first wig and she was like, so amazing. And she's like, come to the salon, we'll shave it. We'll get you a new wig fitted after we've shaved it. It'll seal the deal. You'll be fine. She's, honestly, she gives me life, this woman. She's like my fairy godmother. Um, And I remember being sat in the chair and oh, this fucking song came on that reminds me of um partner at the time. And I remember just, fighting back I don't like people seeing me cry like if I have to get a sore throat from holding in that tear I'll hold it in and um the song came on and I'm literally sat in the chair and bear in mind I'm videoing myself as well because I'm trying to make it as public as possible because 
it's raw and, and it's important for me that everyone sees how real shit is, you know, how life isn't perfect and you've got to keep on fighting it and you've got to get through it. So for me, sharing that was really important and being so open about it when I was hurting the most was really important. Um, but yeah, I remember leaving the salon and sitting in my car for half an hour, just bawling my eyes out, like literally, I was devastated. I told you I won't cry, so stop it. <laughs> Why do you think you are so guarded though? Why do you hold back a lot of emotion? Um, Is that b b being bullied when you were younger? Um, quite a lot of the time, and this isn't a bad thing, when I was growing up quite a lot of the time, it would be Zara's a drama queen, you know, Zara's, don't overreact, don't be such a drama queen. So for me now, when I get upset, it feels like an act, even though it's not. It feels like it's like, oh God, cringe, like act, stop, stop it. So that's kind of why I'm very, I don't like vulnerable. I don't like, you know, I, I will be if I have to be, but if I can control it and just be like, get a grip, shit happens, there's people worse off than you, it's not the end of the world, then I will kind of coach myself out of that mentality. But you do know it's okay to be vulnerable. You know it's okay to oh, be yeah, sad. Course you I know do, it's yeah. okay to cry. Of like, course I do. Oh, that's why male suicide is so... So oh, rife God. is because men suppress. Men block it all in, yeah, yeah. so do you think that could be part of the hair loss as well, suppressing all your feelings and emotions because <sighs> you didn't want to express how you really, truly feel? Um, probably not, no, because I'm quite an open book. I do talk to people and I do, you know, being if an I open do... Book is, being chatty is not an open book, though, because yeah. you, what I see now is you're very sensitive, mm. but then you do suppress yeah. a lot of emotions. Like, mm. You don't really speak the facts of how you're truly feeling. So, like I'm, I say I'm an open book, but I still tell lies. I still like will I go to the to grave. I shout to myself quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. so I, I still will. go to the grave with a lot of shit, but I still think, fuck me, man. Like yeah. I had to write stuff down on a piece of paper and then burn that so I could just put it into the universe. Before. Put it this way, with, with my hair loss journey, I think people have seen me cry twice. That's quite astonishing considering, you know, it, it gets people quite a lot I would go upstairs and have a cry on my own or you know I've, I've never sat in front of my partner at the time or in front of family and cried about things I just haven't done it why do you think that is um because no one can help me so what's the point just, just deal with it by myself yeah but people can be there to surround you and support you man that's that's help yeah. as well like if people think you're fine then people will not ask are you okay because you're portraying yeah. the mask to say that like, skipping about and yeah. fucking... Yeah, I do try, um, especially with... Because obviously social media, the Instagram side of things, is like a big part of my life, you know, especially sharing all this. I do try and show the bad days. But then, like I say, I do worry, like, no one wants to see depressing stuff. Everyone wants to hear uplifting things and positive things. So I do try and avoid being too in depth with how I might be feeling sometimes. Is that because you don't want people to see that you're actually really hurting? Um, no, cause I, I think I've shown that. I think I've shown that you can see it in my face. You know, the videos that I've shared are so raw. You can see, I don't need to say anything. It's there to see. And I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, people get it. I've, I've been overwhelmed with support. I don't need any more support. I've got, I've got plenty of support and it never goes unappreciated. You know, there's, there's only so much I can say about my situation that will actually change it because it is what it is. So, yeah, I try not to get yeah, to... Yeah, that's your life. And that's what, like, even though social media can be toxic, there's a lot of good people out there who show a lot of love and support. Oh my God, so many. Yeah. You know, like... Oh, the support I've had from social media has been amazing. I mean, I only actually started getting trolling when a few profiles um, helped me by sharing my cosmetics because I basically now my silver lining in my hair loss is to get products out there because hair loss is so common, whether it's cancer or, you know, alopecia, whatever the case may be. A lot of people are going through it. Um, so for me, now it's getting the message out there and seeing, you know, you can, you can, be okay, you can look perfectly normal, you've got this. Um, so I, I have had a few profiles that have been fantastic and they've shared stuff for me. The comments, Jesus, not everyone's nice. <laughs> like, imagine waking up to, next to that every morning. Oh, she's plastered in makeup. Oh, why don't she just grow some eyebrows? You know, her poor boyfriend. Like, you do, you get, 
you, you get nasty people, but... Does that play in your mind at night? Uh, at the time it does, now it doesn't. Now I'm just like, you know what, wow. Like, I, I look at their profiles, I'll never retaliate to it, but look, they're hardly oil, oil paintings, you know, they're like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, fucking hell, I mean, come on. Give me a break. Be looking at those fucking profiles, no, but it, it gives. Do you know what it is, right? It's just more like if I click on their profile and they're this, you know, <clears> overweight. <throat> some of them are actually balding as well. It's what's, what's quite funny about it. It's like you are bald. Why are you disrespecting me? You're bald too. Like, give me a break. Um, but yeah, it does. It kind of just gives me that peace of mind of no one is perfect. So let them criticize you because they're far from perfect themselves. And that's, that's enough validation for me to just be like, no, don't even let it bother you. What was the first time have you ever been out in public without a wig? No, I've not. Why? Do you know what? I have absolutely no desire to. I'm not mad at myself for not doing it. I'm not, I don't feel pressure to do it. I like wearing my wigs. I like feeling girly. I like posting pictures bold. I, I like, I, I do what I want to do. And I don't let anyone kind of change that. One side that would affect that, and this isn't the whole reason why I don't, because it's my decision, it's up to me. When I'm putting my, myself on social media bold, it comes with an explanation. So people can see what's going on. They know, you know what's going on. If I went out in public bold, that's left in the imagination. And a lot of the time that is cancer related, you know, I have had people message me saying, have you got cancer? Like, are you going through chemo? Or, and, and that's fine too, because cancer happens, but that's not what's happening to me. I don't want people to look at me feeling sorry for me thinking that I'm poorly, because I'm not. And I don't want them to feel bad for questioning that either, because it's natural to question that. You see someone bold, you're going to wonder what's going on. Yeah, we're nosy bastards. Well, yeah, but I'm a nosy bastard. Yeah, we're all nosy, nosy bastards. bastards. It's human nature, remember, and that's fine. Yeah, I remember my, my dad, he passed away with leukemia. Oh, I remember when he was... Um, getting chemo and we had to shave his hair like it's fucking oh, heartbreaking that shit is. like I remember my mum she went up the stairs and broke her heart like mm -hmm. it's really like has something it's like that's the, the acceptance that something's not right yeah of course obviously all piece is different but then yeah. pe people they see it as the same thing though yeah honestly you'd be surprised that people see they, they identify it and this is this isn't their fault alopecia isn't it's, it's taboo it's people don't want to talk about it people hide it I could have very well hid it I could have carried on on social media acting like I'm wearing wigs because I want to wear wigs. I could have hit it, but I'm not, I'm not fucking doing that. Nah, because that's part of you to, to truly accept and truly heal. It's I helped me accept yeah. myself being as raw as I want to be and just going, you know what? Fuck it. I'm bald. Deal with it. I've got to deal with it. So <laughs> deal with it. And I love that. Like, honestly, I love it. And the messages I, I get, like, of girls saying, I've, I've been losing my hair, but now I'm really excited after seeing your profile because you've made me realise it's not the end of the world. And that gives me, oh, it just fills me up. Like, how do you keep that high spirit then? Like, do you wake up? How do you feel in the morning sometimes? Everybody has their down days, fine. but... You just go on with it day by day. Crack on. Yeah. Honestly, I'm actually really all right with it now. I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it's hard. And sometimes I do go, oh, I just wish I could just shove my hair up in a ponytail on my head. But then every morning I get up, do the gym. And then I'm like, oh, I don't need to wash my hair now. I can shove a wig on and I'm ready to go. And it's great. You know, I mean, I don't like having to wear makeup in the week. I, I do go out without my eyelashes on and without makeup on. I never go out without my eyebrows on because... I look like a morph of heart attack. Have you ever seen heart attack? You know, mm. <laughs> I look like one of them. So I, I do wear my eyebrows, but they're easy. They, you know, they stay on for three days, so that's fine. But I, honestly, I, I, there are worse things in life. And when you actually calm yourself down and look at the bigger picture, you know, I could have lost a leg. I could have, the gentleman you showed me before mm. with all the burns. I mean, Jesus, you know, life isn't, it's not perfect. And people who you think have a perfect life, nine times out of 10, don't have a perfect life. So for me to be able to just show my flaws and use it almost as like, this isn't a flaw, this is an advantage. This is, I'm unique now. Like this is my way of being able to help other people and give them a different mindset, a different outlook on it. Then, it's, you know, it's turning something that could have ruined me into something that might have actually made me. Yeah. 
you know. Because people get alopecia, a big percentage of their hair grows back after a few months. Yeah, so alopecia areata is the most common. So that's patches forms that comes and goes. And, you know, that is normally stress related. You know, your body's sensitive. You know how it is. Really sensitive. Um, But my case of alopecia is very unlikely. I'll get my hair back. Um, I've not got scarring. I still have follicles. But the longer that I'm bald, your skin eventually does heal over the, the follicle so you, you then won't be able to grow hair but I'm not going to let that happen but with the technology and that we've got now like the hair transplant shit like that laser Mental. treatment like there'll be things in the next few years that um right so with a hair transplant um it's it's complete I have had people messaging me this you know why don't you get hair you have to have hair to transplant first and if your body is rejecting hair follicle it won't work so it, that's a no-go but because alopecia is cosmetic because I am not under any health risk I'm sat here very well live and kicking a bit hungover from the weekend well that's I've done that damage you know they don't look at me as I need to help this we need to find the science behind alopecia and fix it cure it they don't care you know they've got plenty of other things to cure and sort out I mean there's a lot of money in it They'll be, if they did find a cure, God, the amount of people with hair loss, even men, you know, balding men would 100% pay it. What kind of stuff? You must have been mad with the research. There must be people who's had the same condition as you and their hairs grew back. Mm. What kind of stuff were they doing? So there's steroids. Um, I went on the steroids, uh, oral steroids for four months. That was a challenge. I don't even like taking a paracetamol when I've got a headache. I'm that girl. I'm like, no, I'll be fine. You know, when I'm not fine, I'm dieting, but I'll be fine. Um, so going on the steroids was quite a big decision for me. But the main reason why I did it was because I wanted to share my experience. You know, I'm sharing everything I know about alopecia. So I have, I owe it to myself and to people I'm talking to, to know all the facts, to have tried it, to have been there, done that. And, I, and I'd always wonder what if, if I didn't. So I did try the steroids. I got hair growth within five days. I had a little fluffy kiwi head. It was great. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, after four months, I did get a lot of hair growth. I hit puberty again, which was quite interesting at the age of 28, you know, <laughs> puberty twice in one lifetime is mental. But anyway, um, yeah, after when I dropped down to three tablets a day on the last month, unfortunately, it did start to fall again. And I was just like, do you know what? Sod this. I'm going to shave it myself. I just shaved it myself. Don't try that. It's really hard with a razor. Not a good idea. Um, but yeah, and I felt fine. Do you know what? I was excited to get rid of it. It was all patchy and it just, it, I preferred me bald than having all that patchy hair everywhere. And it, it just, yeah, it was like I knew I, I was holding on to something that wasn't going to stay. So to get rid of it at the time, I was like, no, it needs to go. And, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I tried it. It was hard, but I knew it wasn't going to stay really. I was trying to have the mentality of it will stay, you know, like you give energy and you get it back. But realistically, it was never going to stay. You never felt it that it would stay. So no, was that really. disheartening again? Like it was as if it was alopecia for the first time again, like hair coming through, building your hopes up to then having to shave it again? <sighs> no, I think because I've always, I always kept my head on me. I knew, and I had a feel, I mean, I knew the odds weren't in my favour for the hair to stay. So for me, it was more like, everyone was like, why are you shaving it now? Like, you're not losing it. I was like, I know I'm losing it again. I can feel it. It's weird. Like when I first lost my hair, I knew I was going to lose it all. Like at the time, my partner was like, you're not, you're not, you're going to be fine. And I remember, I'll never forget, this was the first time I ever broke down about it. He um, sat and took my hair extensions out for me because this stupid clinic told me to keep them in and said it'll be fine. And anyway, the the hair had basically matted that badly into the extension wefts that it was like a carpet at the back of my head, like a tuft. And um, he was taking it out and literally, I've actually got pictures on my Instagram, so I'll send them you for this. Um, half of my hair went like literally it was just bold and I remember turning around and looking at Curtis and just being like is it really bad and he was like he, he was crying I was like oh he's crying like it's obviously really bad and but because everyone thinks that I'm this drama queen in my family and Curtis I think they all thought oh, she's fine she's gonna be fine you know and then when I sent the pictures to my mom she rang me hysterical and was like I can't fucking believe it what the fuck is going on and I'm just there like you're not helping me mom <laughs> You know, I'm trying to keep my shit together. You're not helping. Um, 
But yeah, that that was shit. Why do you think you need to be a strong one all the time? Don't know. I think you just do. You just think you need to deal with shit, don't you? I'd, I'd, I just, I'd hate getting upset over things that I can't change. And, and because I couldn't change it, I mean, I did cry that day. I cried a lot. You know, my, my best friend came around to cut my hair for me because it, what was left would look like rat's tails. It was just like all over the show. Um, and I know I feel emotion because I'm sat here sweating my tits off just talking about it. So I know I get upset, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I kind of bottle it up. It's okay to be upset though. I know. It's okay to show emotion. Because you get very fidgety when you know you're just about to cry. <laughs> I hate it. I hate crying. Why? I don't know. I just don't like it. I, I like it in my own time. company. Yeah, but I'll that's just because you've, you've, you've conditioned yourself into trying to be... Um, Tough. Tr- yeah. Yeah. I think, I think because... Yeah, I don't think I've helped myself with that in the long run. Because I do think a lot of the time I did just need, you know to be told that you're all right and and are you okay or come here give me a hug you know like I'm, I'm if someone goes come here give me a hug I go no I'm fine <laughs> like go away don't hug me because I'll fucking break down like but I think that's just my character that's just how I've, I've dealt with things growing up you know I've, I've tried to do all the meditation and all that I can't I cannot do it save my life to quiet your mind I either fall asleep or I think about what I'm eating for my tea yeah. how's the <laughs> how's friends and stuff treated you have you, have you oh, lost amazing. any friends or has everybody supported no, you no everyone's been so supportive I mean in fact my best friend sat in the lounge now wearing one of my wigs yeah. <laughs> she looks amazing um, mm-hmm. but yeah no it's it's good I, th- I think wigs are the future anyway I think a lot of women now are thinking you know why would I want to sit in a hairdresser's for four hours five hours having my hair dyed when I can just shove a wig on and save the money save the time what yeah, other stuff are. have you tried? Well, to get it back. Yeah. So I've tried PR, PRF. What's that? So this is, it's gross. Are you ready for this? Really bad. Um, so they take blood out of your arm, spin it with a machine that they've got to basically bring all the, I should know what it's called. It's just completely gone mind blank. Um, it brings all the goodness out of the blood that you basically need to put and then they inject it into your head. So you have about, thousands of incisions all over your head inject like bee stings yeah that wrecked did it work um i did it at the same time as when i was on the steroids so i think were you allowed to do two at the same time though yeah 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 Yeah, it's fine it's all natural you're putting your own substance back into your body aren't you putting your own blood Mm -hmm. back in um it definitely encouraged the growth however i think for an if you if i had alopecia areata I, I definitely would do it. Now I've got universalis, I wouldn't bother again. It's not worth it. And I'm petrified of needles. So I've been like a pincushion since I've lost my hair. Like having blood tests every other bloody month and like that was every 10 days. 10 day, every 10 days, like it was intense. But I kind of like look back and I'm quite proud of myself for for doing it. Should be, man, because you're, yeah. you're still here fighting, smiling. Yeah. Still doing your own thing, but people... Mm can just become a recluse that don't want to know anybody just close the what yeah, shut no, the door and just you're owning it like, yeah. like I, we spoke about that girl who's got the, the skin kind yeah, of yeah yeah like she, she models for PLT she's she insane she fucking does her thing like, yeah. she owns it I mean, she has beautiful. a moment as well just be, we always concentrate like, I know the most beautiful some of the most beautiful girls out there but they still use filters yeah. because they don't feel good enough yet yeah, you've got the most the guys I mean, are the best we part. all use yeah. fillers we all you know use I mean? face tune and face yeah, out but this is what I'm saying like, it doesn't matter we always look for flaws in myself yeah, of course we do we are, I'm my own biggest critic by far like I'm I'm terrible but at that, that at the same time I will post a picture of me before and after it's been edited you know I don't do it for other people's benefit I do it because I like to do it I, I enjoy doing it you know, I enjoy doing the little smoothing the skin and defining things. And it's like, I'll, I'm quite an arty person. I quite enjoy doing all that. I used to play on like, you know, the Barbie videos where you can make Barbie and make a perfect. It's weird, isn't it? How does did that affect any other skin parts? Like, does the skin color change? Oh my God. What, what, how does it? So since I've, what, since I've lost my hair, you mean? Yeah. My skin's like a baby's bottom. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's amazing. I've got moisturizer on my arms yeah. now. So I'm like, I literally, I look like a plastic doll when I'm naked. Honestly, it's mental. Like, my skin is literally transformed. I haven't had a spot since. Like, I literally used to get spots all the time. I haven't had a spot since. Like, my skin is, I can't explain it. It's amazing. So, yeah, I don't miss shaving. It's a real Save good. money on shampoo. Yes. Do you wash your wigs? Yeah, I do. Um, 
I don't have to wash them often, but I, I have quite a lot. So I go between quite a lot of wigs. How I'm many very, wigs? very lucky. About 34 wigs now, I think. Yeah, my wardrobe's pretty scary. It's like there's lots of people in there, but there's not. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's another thing that I, I do tend to get. I kind of feel awkward talking about it because wigs are worth probably from about 500 to 1,000, maybe 1,500 pounds per unit. This one that I'm wearing now is 1,600 pounds, right? What? Yeah. So wigs aren't cheap. And, you know, I will often get messages from, I've given away about seven, but obviously because I'm getting sent these units to promote, I can't just give them away. It's part of the, the agreement. You know, if you send me a wig, I'm promoting it for you for a long-term period. Um, and I, I do feel guilty that I am in a position where because I've shared it on my social media, I do get sent up free wigs and people will kill for that. Some people save years and don't leave the house without a cap because they can't afford to buy a wig. And it's like, oh, I get these messages and I'm like, fuck, like, how do I even answer that? Because I can't relate to that. You know, when I have to say to them, like, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I'm fortunate enough to have been helped with that but I do get discount codes for people and I do do my research and and promote good wigs to help people get a good wig because that, that's hard in itself to find someone that's actually good at making wigs like you can get some shit ones see when you're do you lie in bed without when you go to sleep there's no wigs no nothing do you yeah. ever feel I know people some people I've interviewed guys who's maybe been in the army and they've maybe lost a leg or an arm yeah and they still get an itchy arm or a and that's your leg when it's really weird so I still dream that I've got hair I actually had a dream last week that I was having my hair extensions done and in my dream I was going but I've, my hair's falling out though so why why are you doing my hair extensions but in this dream I had hair it was really strange I mean 28 years with hair you know that's a long time to then just have nothing mm. it's like a big you know, I've lost all my hair, you know. So in, in your mind, you do sometimes go back to it and you do think, oh, just, you know, don't know, I need to go and wash my hair. And then you go, no, I don't. <laughs> it is really, really, it's really surreal. Sometimes. What about the stem cells? Talk to me about the stem cells. I am so excited about this. So my dad's basically finally started to want to help, bless him. Um, I think he wanted to help the whole time, but I think a lot of people, sorry, I'm knocking that. I think a lot of people thought, that after a year, it'll come back. And I think now that obviously I've got to a year, they're all like, shit, she might be in this for the long haul, which is fine if, if that's the case. I think a lot of people would have probably wanted to help you at the start, but I think yeah. with your personality saying, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm not <laughs> going to do it. Yeah, that could be part of it as well. People don't want to know you anymore. Yeah. For me personally, speaking to you, I think, yeah. you know, no, I'll be fine, I'll do it myself, or you'll sit there. Yeah, that's like a coping just, mechanism for me. You're that. just open now for other people yeah. to try and help you, which is I'm, I'm glad my dad's starting to help me now. But he um, always would have. You just weren't ready for him to try and help you. I, I wanted to try and exhaust everything I could do first before I needed help off other people because it was more me accepting it was happening and accepting that I can't change it rather than I didn't want people to help me. You know, if I, in life with me, if I wanted it, I'd do it. And I'd do it for myself. I don't like people doing it. I'd never lent money off people or like ask for a favor. I cannot stand favors. I won't do it. Unless I really need to do it, I won't do it. So yeah, it is, you've, you've got me nailed there. It is very much in my nature. But my dad rang me the other day and um, he, he knows I'm going through a bit of a tricky time at the minute with, with my personal life. And um, he basically just said, you know, I'm looking into stem cells. I'm speaking to people. And I've already done this, but they told me they couldn't help me. However, my dad's found something that, I think it was a documentary. And they basically say in that documentary, they've cured alpecia. So obviously his ears have pretty picked up and he's gone like right I'm gonna to speak to them um so I'm actually just waiting for that information to be given back to us you know waiting for him to have the phone call as well um because he's sending my granddad as well my granddad's got what's that condition when you when you shake when you get older um, like Parkinson's heaven. Parkinson's so my granddad's got Parkinson's so we're also trying to help him as well um because how amazing would it be if you can modify your genes so you don't get ill like you don't have yeah. the health problems it's incredible um, so yeah, if I do do that, if it does seem something that's, you know, worth do, worth trying, which I will, you know what I'm like, um, then I'll be definitely blocking the whole thing and like making sure that every single bit of it is out there. Yeah, stem cells are a powerful thing. You actually get stem cells from an umbilical cord. It's 
it's mental, isn't it? Yeah. So but we cut the umbilical cord when we're born. Yeah. Instead of letting it actually yeah. stay connected, mm-hmm. but when we get actually get more, we'll have mm-hmm. more stem cells. Well, my brother's girlfriend's actually pregnant at the minute yeah. uh, with a second child. She's due in December, and they're going to freeze the umbilical cord. I always say it. Um, but apparently anyone in, a, in the family, so her side or my brother's side, can get stuff from that and, and be, you know, treated mm-hmm. with it. So, I mean, that'll be amazing. I'll be giving them some money for that. <laughs> I'll have a cut of that one. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting. I can't really say too much on the stem cell front because I don't know enough yet to be able to say what could happen. But I'm definitely up for that. Like, I mean, even if it hurts, I'm just like, give it to me. Yeah. You know. You've got to roll the dice with anything that... Like- Mm. end of the day it is fucking only here but that's easy for me to say listen yeah. I'm going bald at the top on the sides and I still look at and, and I look at my, pi- my pillow in the morning and I think fuck me there's more hairs you need to get a silk pillow yeah is that what I need to get yeah, I'll be getting silk fucking pillow. one it's of good them. for anti-aging as well yeah. so I like yeah yeah so pillows. it's difficult because we're all craving to be liked we're all craving yeah. to be to find perfection but perfection doesn't exist of course it doesn't exist and, and do you know what since I've lost my hair I actually feel like I'm a better person my views on things, on people have completely changed. And I was never bad before, but now the value in, in people and, you know, the, the, it's like they touch me when I'm speaking to people that are going through the same thing. It's like, it's like I feel it. It's really strange. I can't explain it without sounding weird. But yeah, yeah. when I get messages, you know, I had a woman message me about a month ago and she messaged me saying, you know, I've got a bulb patch in my head. Um, I don't know what to do about it. And I'm like, you know, go to the doctors, get your bloods done, get the patch checked. Just make sure your health's okay because that's, that's obviously priority number one. She messaged me last week and she basically said, I just want to thank you. And I was like, why? What have, what have I done? Are you okay? She's like, you know, I went to the doctors. They found a tumour in, in the bulb patch. I've been losing my hair because I've got a tumour. And she said, if I didn't go to the doctors when I did, if I'd have left it for a longer period of time, it would have grown so big that they wouldn't be able to treat it. She's like, you've, you've saved my life. And I'm like, I don't think I have, but I was like, I'm getting, all, I'm getting emotional now, I'm fidgety. And I was like, oh my God, I'm <laughs> fidgety. I'm trying to keep it still like pretty woman like that. <laughs> um, and I was just like, oh my God, like, oh, if that's how she feels about me, I was just like, Oh, I love it. It's just the best feeling in the world. You know, it's rewarding. And it's not just about me or about the experience that I've had. It's about other people now. And and for me, before it all happened, I was on Instagram, you know, posting pictures thinking, this is so fickle. This is so, like, I am very lucky. I've got, you know, a beautiful family, beautiful friends. I've, I've got support where I need it. I've supported myself. I've, I've, you know, got my shit together. I have nothing to worry about as such. And I was almost like, what can I post that's real? You know, what what can I post that no one wants to see a perfect perceived life and, and think that everything's great? And and when this happened, I was like, fucking hell, I feel like I've asked for this, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But it is, it's it's just nice to show that, you know, life's not perfect and to show it. Do you get a lot of messages with people with alopecia? Every day. Overwhelmed with what it. What ages? All ages. Uh, there was a teenage girl that messaged me a few weeks back that was quite shit. You know, she's being bullied in school. She doesn't want to go to school anymore. Mum's making her go. She can't afford a wig. They won't let her wear a cap in class. I nearly rang the flipping school. What? And I nearly rang the school and went, I was like, tell me what school you are at. I was mortified for her. I sent her a wig. What school was that, you know? No, I didn't ask her because I'd have rang them. Yeah, <laughs> and I rang them. But I do, now that COVID's obviously out of, the, the red alert, I do want to try and get into schools and be able to, you know, just kind of talk about it because it is so common and people are so... Kids are cruel, aren't they? You know, Bastards, man, kids are fuckers. Yeah. I mean... Everybody has as well, but there's also goodness and people are like... Yeah, of course. People are scared of the unknown and people are scared of change and people are scared of people being different. Yeah, of course they are. Big time. I'm scared of being different. Before I lost my... I was petrified of being different you know I I was very much trying to keep on trend with things and trying to keep you know within what what is popular and what is cool and then you know sometimes you don't have a choice but to be different no you just got to soldier on yeah just fuck it Mm -hmm. and uh, just got to soldier on keep pushing like if you've got something wrong with you I told you about the cold water stuff you still haven't done it yet 
Oh my god! I have my showers that hot. I am literally sweating by the time no, I get out. So of the it. cold water, what it does is strengthens your immune system. Right. It raises your dopamine levels by two hundred and fifty percent. It's good for your skin. Yeah. It's good for your heart. It lowers anxiety. It lowers depression. Just to let you know, I did try this. Mm-hmm. My water in my shower won't go cold. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take you Fuck upstairs. Off. I'm gonna take you upstairs and show you after this interview. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, right, see, told you. And you'd be like, it's fucking lukewarm. It doesn't go cold. Because the cold water strengthens your immune system. It, I do it, need to it try strengthens it. white blood cells. Like, yeah. These are the ones that fight infection. These are the mm. ones that my life's totally transformed by it. The and cold getting water up therapy. earlier as well, isn't it? Yeah, getting up first good. thing in the morning. I'm a lazy bastard, so Oh, I'm a lazy bitch. Yeah, I love, so. I love lying. I only got out of bed at ten today. Lazy lazy. Fucker. I only had four hours sleep this weekend though. Yeah. <laughs> I needed it. How was it with a hangover the next day? How do you, there's everything, everything goes I mean, up. alcohol obviously is a trigger towards every mm. depression really, isn't it? Um, at the minute, it's not probably the best thing for me to be drinking as we mentioned earlier. Um, but I mean, I like socializing. I like going out and unfortunately, I need to work on my self-love and my confidence in myself to be able to hold a conversation with someone sober on a night out, you know, to be able to wear high heels sober on a night out. They hurt after a few hours. <laughs> Being drunk helps numb that up. Um, but yeah, I, I do, you know, we, we're all part of the same problem really, aren't we? We all see, it's crazy how alcohol can be something that's like, oh, I'm, I'm celebrating, let's get pissed. It's my birthday, let's get pissed. Somebody's dead, let's get, get pissed. Yeah. I've lost my hair, let's get Just pissed. Just had a baby, let's yeah. get pissed. Let's have a wake. You know, like it's like, how is alcohol that's something that's so actually bad for you and, and, and massively self-destructive, something to celebrate with? It's mental, but unfortunately, you know, that's how we are, we've been that's built. It. That's how we've been conditioned. So mm. going forward then for the future then, what's the plans for yourself? Right, so... I am going to start hosting some events in Manchester first for alopecia girls to meet, to come. Um, I'm going to have wig stands. I'm going to have my cosmetics range. I'm going to have dermatologists go. The the hardest thing for me with my hair loss was not knowing what the fuck was going on and not knowing who to help, what to get checked, what to do. I literally, it was like a deer in headlights when it started happening. So I don't want anyone to ever have to go through that. I want to be able to provide a a gathering or, you know, something there to support mentally these girls or even guys going through it. Um, So that's what I'm doing first. I'm going to hold my first one, hopefully September. Coco just sat by the door. Um, Obviously, I've got the stem cell treatment, which I'm buzzing to try um and just working on myself really just trying to get myself back to who I was before it all and and just try and be confident in myself who was that I was really confident I actually went to visit my dad um in IB for three weeks ago and he messaged me last week and he was like I think this is why he's helping me with the stem cells now because I think he's seen firsthand I'm not okay you know he's seen he said to me your confidence isn't the same you're not you're not that girl anymore and and oh god I was gutted after that phone call because no one wants to hear that do they you know even if you're pretending you're okay you don't want to be told you're not um so yeah just just working on myself and and almost appreciating myself before I actually do too much for everyone else yeah mm. you gonna get there yeah that's my mission now yeah, everybody's got a mission, but as long as you've got goals, as long as you can you can see where you're going, as long yeah. as you can see, if, if you, I believe you can truly heal yourself. I believe oh, like, God, damn everything right. is within. Like, damn you're going right. through that steroids and believing that your hair's not going to grow back. I believe you can also put it into existence. Well, yeah, this is what's so frustrating because when I was on the steroids, I was like, stop thinking it, stop thinking it. You know, when you lose your hair, I was like, don't stress you can't help it. It's just human instinct when you're going through a situation that you want so badly. You can't help but kind of put that energy out there to have them doubts or concerns. And and my God, I tried. I really tried to shut it all off. But I think because I know the odds weren't in my favor, that didn't help. And obviously also with me sharing my journey, I got girls there messaging me saying, oh, I tried the steroids too and I lost it again. And it's like that immediately shits on everything because you're like, oh, like you're like, no, it's fine, I'll be different. But obviously, when you're hearing it from people firsthand, 
it does piss on your chest. That's how if you're going to do anything, don't tell anybody. Keep your cards close to your chest. Yeah. I don't think it really impacted me that much, if I'm being totally honest. I, because the main reason why I did want to try it was to say I've tried it. But yeah, no, I, I, I like... My, my fuel at the minute is sharing everything. That It sounds really bizarre and it sounds very like I'm doing it all for Instagram. It's not like that at all. It is helping me process what's going on because I'm sharing it and being raw about it. It's helping me feel empowered, feel motivated to just keep on trying and, and you know, just just feel like I'm making a difference as well. But that's therapy for you. To yeah, get it, it off your chest because when people ask you if you're fine, you tell them you're okay. So when you're doing that on social yeah. media, that's you getting it off your chest in some mm. way that is empowering you because you're not holding it in. You mm. suppress all your fucking emotions. Put it this way, right? I'm currently more upset about my recent breakup than my hair loss. I mean, I've definitely changed a lot. I have, I've, I've grown very confident on social media, but very insecure in my own home. Social media is fake though. It's not when you're dealing with real life girls going through the exact same I get thing. It, but it makes it very real. I understand that, yeah. but it's still an illusion. It's still in a fake. No, I get what you're saying. It's still a fake bubble where yeah. it's only a screen. Yeah, no, it is. It where is. it's obviously giving you the confidence to, to still keep, keep going and push forward, which yeah. is a great thing. Like, it can be a great tool to then help people. Like, I speak to so many people yeah. back with drug abuse. But ultimately, I'm not helping myself because I'm like, yeah. I, I have been very much on edge for the past probably say since late last year you know you do question everything you do question yourself and you you do wonder if people are going to see you differently and I, I don't like to be seen different I don't like people to question me like to wonder I don't know what I'm thinking or feeling I, I'm, I like to just throw it all out there I'm very forward with everything so of course but people are always going to make assumptions people are always going to judge that's the human mm. the human body that's the human mind that like you look at people and you'll judge because that's what we do. Yeah. We're nosy fuckers. But it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to say, you know what, I'm having a right fucking bad day today. Yeah. But it's okay to then, and people always say this, like, it's okay not to be okay. Like, that's true, but it's not okay to fucking live there. Yeah. Because we create how we think, we create how we feel. I believe yeah. that anything can be cured. I genuinely believe that. I do too. Things, I think your mind's a really powerful yeah, thing. Yeah, man, Jody Spencer's very powerful. He was uh, knocked down on a, on a he was on a, his bike, knocked mm. down, broke his spine. And by lying in his bed and visualising every day his spine coming back and getting fixed together, yeah. his spine hurt in place I again after a few months, six months. Yeah. yeah, I remember you telling me about him. I love stories like that. Yeah. I love people's like oh, journeys like that. It's the visualisation. You see people with cancer that will go home and yeah. not work, doesn't work for everybody, but people do genuinely change that gonna, and believe yeah. it themselves and they fight. Like, they do say a lot of people have cancer, but because they don't go and see a doctor about it, they ends up curing themselves without them even realising they had that. Imagine. Yeah. Imagine if like you could actually if you could, could prove that that's the case. There's so it, many but there's so that. many people out there who do these kind of things by mm. the power of the mind. Yeah. I have been really, really trying to channel my mind into like visualising hair growth and a lot, but then I don't want it to consume me. So I'm almost just taking it my priority now is accepting myself. Do you think you way. doubt yourself a lot? Um, when it comes to love, yeah, massively. When it comes to what I'm capable of and what I want, no. I'll, I'll do whatever I want to do and I'll, I'll do it. I believe men are the weakest. That's why yeah, the that, suicide that's what I mean. rate is so high in men because yeah. we don't know how to handle emotion. We don't know how to the handle The suicide feelings. rate in men with alopecia is double what it is with women. Is it? Mm -hmm. Really high for men. Yeah, sad, man. Because obviously men have facial hair as well. Like Imagine losing your beard, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, the hair on your head. You know, for a woman, we're very much makeup anyway. We can do makeup. You know, yeah. most of us won't get out of bed and answer the door to the postman even without makeup on. So for a woman, it's normal to almost feel that, that self-conscious worry about their image. But for a man, it's not. Men, yeah. men like to just get out of bed and not have to bother, don't they? But mm. if you lost all your hair, you probably wouldn't have that. I'm wanted. fucking losing lean as well. Right? <laughs> I'll be getting one I of those wigs off you next year. <laughs> Don't you worry. You just messaged me. I've got some great contacts with hair uh, transplants. They're brilliant. Hair transplants are even um, hair pieces for men. They are amazing. Ah, fuck that, man. I'm growing all gracefully. I'm not dying my hair. I have in the past. I'm not doing that <laughs> shit no more. Like, we'll, we'll have this conversation if you ever lose it. Yeah. I'm not even going to jinx it. I'm not even going to tempt faith with it. You know, whatever happens, but I'm yeah. here if you need. I will, man, because people's message me say, oh, we can give you this and that. And you know what? I thought, fuck it. 
I want to, I, I'm trying to, pra- I'm trying to preach that everything's within. Yeah. It is only fucking hair, like, as, and it's easy for, but let's for wait. a man. Let's wait. We'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to we'll wait. Yeah. I don't. Like, fast forward ways. time now, five years time. All right, James. Yeah. yeah well, what's this uh, company <laughs> called that do high pieces? Uh, <laughs> for anybody that's watching, it's maybe, um, going through the, the struggles with losing mm-hmm. their hair, what advice would you give for them? Right, okay. Advice I would give, I mean, the first things you check when you're losing your hair, contraception, if you've changed contraception. If you've had a baby, very common to lose hair after you've had a baby. Very, very common. So try not to worry. Uh, get your bloods done by the doctors, then take them for a second opinion to a dermatologist. You can go through the NHS, but it takes forever. You'd be waiting six months, and by the time you actually see one, you're probably bald if you're going to lose it all. You know, that's not to be negative, but if you're going to lose it all, you're going to lose it all, and there's no time's not on your side with that. Like, you just got to go with the flow with it. Um, just making sure that your health's okay should be your priority. Get a wig, wigs are fantastic. Um, and giving yourself more like you time. Like, I have baths now every day, I love a bath. I never used to do that. I used to just get myself worked up and, you know, just dismiss how I'm feeling when I need to relax. I'd just sit there on my phone, stressed. Now I just have a bath and play, like, relaxing music for an hour and then that'll just completely be my therapy. You know, like, that'll chill me out. But, yeah, I think ultimately with hair loss, it's it's really difficult to say it because it sounds so harsh, but you can't control hair loss. So you've got to quickly adapt your mind around whatever the outcome is, is what it's going to be. And you've got to literally just look for the groups, look for, you know, my Instagram's great for a lot of people going through hair loss because it's, it's reassuring that you can still look normal. And I, I always give tips and tricks on what you can do and, you know, good places for wigs and stuff like that. I mean, like I say, wigs are the future anyway. You watch in a few years time, everyone will be wearing wigs anyway. They'll, hair extensions are a thing of the past. So, yeah. 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 What about you moving forward for the future? What's your plans? I was actually, you know what, really, really strange. I was actually sat in bed with Marley this morning, my friend, she's in there. Um, and I was like, I feel like at the minute, I'm almost at a crossroads in my life where I've done quite a lot that I want to do. So I've been, I've traveled, I've, I've, you know, the only thing I've not done is have a family and I've no urgency for that either. Like, 30 next year and I'm not even bothered like I'm just like if it happens it does if it doesn't it doesn't so I'm, I'm almost at a point now where I, I want to find what makes me work what makes me run you know what makes me feel alive because at the minute I, I feel like I don't feel like I'm not alive but I feel like everyone needs some kind of target or some kind of goal and at the minute for me I don't have one that's really standing out and that's feel, quite sad. Do you feel a bit lost? Oh, yeah. I'm bad to feel lost, though, at the minute, aren't I? Let's be honest. Yeah. It's, it's inevitable that you feel lost, especially when things are changing so fast and you don't know what's going to happen. You know, how can I plan my future when I can't even plan what I'm doing tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> everything that happens in your life is either a lesson or a blessing. So Definitely. You've just got to learn from it. Like, fucking hell, man. Like Yeah. I'm really, it's really... It's going to be obstacles. Like, even if you're here yeah. back next year, you think all your, oh, your problems are away, of course. Oh, no. The well, they are. Still there, the so. hair is the last of my problems. Honestly, like, it, it, don't get me wrong. It, it's been a shock and it's been shit. But I'm fine. Like, honestly, the hair's the, the last of my problems right now. I love wigs. Wigs are fantastic. And I've had that much support with it that I, I can't sit here and even complain for a second. What makes you happy? Uh... What makes me happy? Feeling feeling comforted, like loved. I love being around my family at the minute. I've got all my family here, it's great. When Apart from when they're making noise in the hallway. Oh, we're doing this. Mm-hmm. But no, being around my family. Um, my dad lives in Monaco, so I'm probably going to visit him at some point. Um, brother normally lives in Ibiza, so he, it's nice having him home. And my mum normally lives in Marbella. So being around them at the minute is my priority and, and being with friends and just... Just, just making sure, like you said earlier, that I'm actually opening up to people and and not shutting myself away. But what makes you happy when you're alone, not with everybody else there? Watching porn. I'm not even gonna lie. That's what I do when I'm on my own. I watch porn. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, have, just chilling, just having a bath, just chilling, making myself feel good. Do you know what makes you happy? Yeah, I, I like I'm, I like doing things out of the ordinary. Like I don't want a box standard life. Like what? 
Like, like what? I asked you what makes you happy. You've just given me a ten different things, but that's because you're surrounded by other people. I asked you what makes you happy alone. You know? It probably is watching porn. I'm not even gonna lie. It probably is, <laughs> and sleeping. Um, yeah, I just like I like doing things. I just I don't really like being on my own. I get bored. I get restless. I like my own company. I like sitting in peace with a nice film on. You know what I want to watch rather than what everyone else wants to watch. I think everyone's like that though, aren't they? Yeah. Everyone gets to a point where they just want to just sit and not have to talk to people and not have to communicate and just have their own thoughts in the mind. You know that's it's mm. nice. But I would much rather be thinking, oh, I'm going to go Alton Towers tomorrow and go on loads of rides. Like, I'm just, I like to have plans and have things to look forward to. Yeah. How are you mm. feeling now? Not as sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I get so sweaty when I'm talking about everything. I'm gross, honestly. My wig's sticking to my armpits. Mm. Minga. Tara, for coming on today, baby, and telling your story. Listen, you're doing amazing. Yeah, thank you keep you. pushing forward, keep working on yourself. Thanks for wanting to hear my story. Yeah, no, it's great. Man, listen, this will help a lot of people. Like I say, well, every Hopefully. day is a struggle or a battle for somebody in, in different circumstances. Yeah, but for sure. Life can be an, an amazing journey as well. Like, would you like thank to finish you. up on anything? No, that's every. I think we've pretty much boxed everything off. Yeah. But yeah, um, for those who are obviously going through hair loss, my brand is Zarelina Cosmetics. So for those who don't know what it is that's what it there is there you go because i've not actually mentioned that thanks for coming on today babe thank you take care yay check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast thank you